Wizkid went from being one of the best-selling Nigerian artists, constantly churning out back-to-back -back hits in the early 2010s, to a joke and being trolled on the internet several times for his embarrassing releases in recent years. This is the true story of the rise and the embarrassing fall of Wizkid. Born Ayodeji Ibrahim Balogun on 16th July 1990 in Lagos State, Nigeria. He grew up in Shita, Surule local government area, a small suburb in Lagos State, Nigeria, the same neighborhood that was home to sonorous Nigerian singer and songwriter Simi Pepenazi, the late OJB Jezreel, amongst others. Wizkid grew up in the shadows of a polygamous family, with his mother being a Christian and his father a Sunni Muslim, with two other wives and 12 kids in total. Growing up in this bustling city, Wizkid was surrounded by the pulsating rhythm of Afrobeat, a genre pioneered by the likes of Fela Kuti and King Sonny Adi. From a young age, Wizkid displayed an innate talent for music, drawing inspiration from his surroundings, local street jams, and household favorites. In this city, he honed his skills in the art of music. He grew up in Shita, an environment where he knew he wanted better for himself, and the drive to succeed was always in his blood. His experiences in life shaped him into the artist he became, and he learned the power of using his platform to inspire others. As a child, Wizkid faced the challenges of urban life, but was driven by a passion for music. With limited resources and against the backdrop of Nigeria's social economic challenges, Wizkid's journey was fueled by determination and a dream to elevate African music to the global stage. He began recording music at a tender age, drawing from his experiences and the rich cultural tapestry of Lagos. Whiskey's journey to stardom traces back to his days at Ijebu D Grammar School. He briefly attended Lagos State University before dropping out. He later enrolled at Lee City University, but dropped out after completing two sessions. Whiskey started recording tracks at the age of 11, showcasing his remarkable talent and went by the stage name Lil Prince until 2006 when he changed it to Whiskey. However, his journey to fame was not an easy one. Whiskey would go to Point Beat Studio in Surulewi, owned by OJB Jezreel, who had connections to several A-list musicians and producers at that time, who constantly trooped to his studio to work, trying to get their attention, but no one would give him a chance to show his talents. So he slept outside the studio for a long time, watching other musicians go in and out as they got their businesses done. At that time and age, when social media was not as mainstream as it is now, you might not have a chance if you don't have the money and the right connections. At OJB's Point Beat Studio, Whiskey watched Two Face Idibia record songs from Grass to Grace album. He also found himself present during the recording session for Sound Sultan's debut album, Jabba Dances. These experiences provided valuable insights and connections that would later prove invaluable in his own career. Like many Nigerian artists, Whiskey's journey can be traced back to the church, where he formed a group called The Glorious Five with a couple of his church friends. They managed to release an album prior to disbanding. Need to see. A seasoned Nigerian musician played a significant role in shaping Whiskey's career by mentoring and guiding him when he was just 15 years old. In 2009, at the age of 19, Whiskey caught the attention of Banky W, a renowned Nigerian artist and CEO of Empire Meat Entertainment (EME). Recognizing Whiskey's raw talent and potential, Banky W signed him to EME, marking the beginning of a transformative phase in Whiskey's career. Under EME, Whiskey released his debut single. Palacio Boy, which became an instant hit, propelling him into the limelight and garnering widespread acclaim. He co-wrote Omoge You Too Much, a song from Mikey W's The W Experience album, showcasing his songwriting abilities. His dedication and hard work began to pay off as he continued to hone his craft and gain recognition. With his infectious melodies, distinctive vocals, and charismatic stage presence, Whiskey quickly rose to prominence in the Nigerian music scene. He collaborated with industry heavyweights including M.I. Abaga, Tubaba, and Olamidi, further solidifying his reputation as a formidable force in African music. His debut album, Superstar, released in 2011, showcased Whiskey's versatility, blending Afrobeat, reggae, and hip hop influences. It remains the second best selling album on Not Just OK and was the most highly anticipated Nigerian album of 2011. Superstar received generally positive reviews from music critics. Superstar won Best Album of the Year at the 2012 Nigerian Entertainment Awards. It was nominated for Album of the Year and Best R&B Pop Album at the 2012 Hedis Awards. Follow Your Boy and Whiskey the next rated award at the Hedis in 2011. In 2014, Whiskey recorded Ayo, a self-titled second studio album. It featured guest appearances from Permi Kuti, Panky W, Shei Shei, Finu, Tiga, Econ, and Wale. Ayo won Best R&B Pop Album 
and was nominated for Album of the Year at the 2015 Hedis Awards. The album was also nominated for Album of the Year at the 2015 Nigerian Entertainment Awards. The official remix for Oju Eleba is sung from the album that highlights the struggle he endured in the early years of his recording career, features vocals from Drake and Skepta. This song was a major breakthrough into the international scene for Wizkid, who has since left EME by that time. In 2017, Wizkid released his third studio album, Sound From The Other Side. Wizkid could not get enough of his breakthrough in the international scenes, and it seemed like this album was an audacious attempt to announce himself properly on the American stage. With his globalist genre hopping vision, the album, a world party blending pop, R&B, dancehall and afrobeat, was lambasted by fellow singer Davido for being pom pom or leaning too heavily on the music styles outside of afrobeat to appeal to an international audience. While the reviews were mixed, the goal was accomplished. Wizkid became a solidified mainstream international presence in the music industry. In mid-2019, Wizkid was featured on Beyoncé's Brown Skin Girl, taking from the critically acclaimed The Lion King, The Gift soundtrack. This feature earned him numerous nominations at major international awards, including two Soul Train Awards, an NAACP Image Award, a BET Award, and his first Grammy Award for Best Music Video. Wizkid had little to prove by 2020, and surprisingly, after all this time, he was still in his 20s. With all eyes on him, he worked with major producers P2G and Ejoko to build a legacy of timeless music rather than of the moment hits of the Nigerian global icon. Welcome, Made in Lagos. Essence from the MIL album earned him two Grammy nominations. In the same month, he also received four Soul Train Awards nominations, winning one. Wizkid announced More Love, Less Ego, his fifth studio album in 2022. This album was much anticipated, and while the album was a success in the international scene, picking as number two on the US World Billboard album, locally, the album was not much of a big deal, with only Bad To Me and Two Sugar enjoying some airplay, a far cry from Wizkid's normal starts. Following the loss of his mother, the renowned Afrobeat superstar went on a brief hiatus. However, he returned to the studio to record a four-track EP, which he released on December 22nd. It was his second EP, which he titled Sound Man 2. The reviews for Sound Man Volume 2 EP are mixed. While some sources praise the EP for its experimental nature and ability to offer a good time to listeners, other reviewers criticized the EP for failing to leave a strong impression with some describing it as a lukewarm offering that doesn't fully connect with the audience. Wizkid is not that 2012 artist anymore. He has grown and been influenced by more things than we can imagine. Now, he's showing worrying signs of an artist who has split to and one who is not properly evolving to stay in touch. Instead, he keeps coming up with the familiar formula that we have seen from him. He realizes the need to evolve. He keeps working with different producers, hoping to switch the sound, but the result has simply remained the same. In a nutshell, Wizkid has not been able to compete with his recent project. As he continues to evolve and redefine his sound, one thing is clear. Wizkid's legacy in African music is unparalleled, and his influence will resonate for generations to come. What do you think of Wizkid as an artist and his switch to a more mature sound? Does this switch sit well with you? Do you think Wizkid is losing it? Let us have your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.